All right, hey you guys. So this video is gonna be about the changes in 2021 IBC. So new code just came out. I'm still using 2018 code provisions for all my projects right now as of November, 2021. So it takes a while for it to get implemented into the projects you're working on. So aside from that point, I just wanna cover some of the changes that I read on this article in Structure Magazine. Great magazine for engineers, highly recommend if you're into educational entertainment. It's got a bunch of stuff regarding standards, design problems, just new research in steel, concrete. But besides the point, it has an article that just came out in the November edition that goes over some of the changes. So let's just get started and get into it. So starting off with wind zones, nothing much has changed from one through four, but on five, they added design wind pressures and their applicable zones with dimensions to be used for exterior components and cladding materials not specified, yada, yada, yada. So basically it's just adding the dimension of the zones and adding them to construction documents. All right, the second section is risk categories of assembly spaces. So they pretty much added this description in risk category three for occupancy. Buildings and other structures containing one or more public assembly spaces, each having an occupant load greater than 300 and a cumulative occupant load of these public assembly spaces of greater than 2,500. All right, next up we have load combinations. So the strength design and allowable stress design load combinations have been deleted and reference ASCE 7 chapter two. So right here you can see that they pretty much just say go check out <laughs> chapter two. All right, so next up we have dead load. So as you can see, they added quite a bit in this section. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they're trying to be a little bit more explicit and clear on certain loads, especially when it comes to vegetable roofs, solar panels, and fixed service equipment. I wouldn't worry about it too much unless you work with that often. I know solar panels are becoming a little bit more popular, so I guess in the future that might be something I have to use. All right, so next on the list is updated snow maps. I'm sure they updated every edition. You just try to find where your project's located and just grab the snow load. Honestly, I don't like using this, mainly because I use this other website. It's called ATC Hazards, and you just plug in the address of the, the location of the project, and it'll give you the wind speed, the snow loads, and all the seismic parameters you need for that location. So if you don't know about it, highly recommend it. It's pretty intuitive. Just plug in the address, get the values out of it. All right, so next on the list is soil uplift. So they're finally addressing uplift from hydrostatic pressure and expansive soil since previously section 1610 didn't address it. All right, so uplift loads on floor and foundations. Basement floors, slab on ground, foundations, and similar approximately horizontal elements below grade shall be designed to resist uplift loads where applicable. The upward pressure of water shall be taken as the fully hydrostatic pressure applied over the entire area. The hydrostatic load shall be measured from the underside of the element being evaluated. The design for upward loads caused by expansive soils shall comply with section 1808.6. All right, so next on the list is rain loads. Some significant changes that the article wants to emphasize is secondary system design has been harmonized with roof rain load provisions to provide realistic expectations of roof drainage system and potential roof loading by rainfall. So the IBC is now consistent with ASCE 7 provisions. And what strikes me is that I honestly don't account for any of this on any of the projects I've worked on. I'll probably ask an older engineer an example of this because I haven't seen this as of now. So I'd be interested in uh, knowing what that looks like and how it's implemented. So yeah, that pretty much sums up all the changes in this article. So there's more to come, obviously, and I probably actually won't see this for a while in my workflow, but uh, it's just good to be aware of because at some point this is going to affect me and some of the projects I'm doing. There's going to be four other parts. I don't know if they're going to be four other videos, but it really interested me and I wanted to share with you guys. This article is available on Structure Magazine for free if you want to download it, read it for yourself because there's a bunch of other cool articles on there. So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to share. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.